Yo, 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 Bed Nation Live, episode number 15. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry for that. Today we're not live. This episode is not live because of problems. You know how it is in Zimbabwe. Internet is hating. I was late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he still made it though. He's here. MC Chira with we're chilling with the legend today because the internet like I said in sketch of Tinya Tones about how this nigga came about. Because I've known him for a minute. This is episode 15. I'm Mark Baxter Dawn, and this is Red Nation Live. Today we're chilling with MC Chira, now known as Zimbiana Jones. Zimbiana Jones. Yeah. My nigga, I've known you for a minute. Uh -huh. I've known you for a minute. I've known you ever since the synergy days. Yeah. Synergy days. Uh -huh. Why I know the It is after I mean. Mm -hmm. But I know the from like four to five, yeah. even more before. It's like, like you introduced me to all the ether uh, in the club. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's where the name MC Cheetah came from. Yeah. It's like, you know, um, especially at that time, it was a lot harder to get get your hands on a microphone like, uh -huh. to let people like let you perform for their crowd and stuff like that. So I decided to kind of finesse the situation and just holler at the DJ and be like, yo, listen, man. Like, you know, I can MC, I can like, you know, hype up a crowd for you or whatever. And then after like he sees that, okay, I know what I'm doing, I'm just be like, yo, so it's throwing an instrumental or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, used yeah. to rap on some instrumentals. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And it just took off from there. So was that like your first contact with hip hop or you were rapping before or you were, you were I was actually rapping. dropping bars? I was dropping bars like I was dropping bars from when I was about nine years old. Nice. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, shout out to you. I mean, by, by the time, by the time I got to Synergy, like, I was in, like, my late teens and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So, like, with that now, like, I'd already done, like, you know, mostly, like, talent shows, et cetera, et cetera, you know what I mean? Or, like, the odd house parties and stuff, yeah, yeah. but, you know, it was never really on that wide scale and stuff, you know? it just took off from that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Red Nation Live, episode number 15. Silence. Mm -hmm. Do subscribe, please. So tell me, back in the day, there were not too many studios around. Mm -hmm. Where did you get like your first studio recording, let's your vocals and everything? Oh, that was like way later. That was way after seeing that. Way, was, way. Yeah, that was now, um, I'd say, 06. Probably, like, yeah. Yeah. Because, um, like, what ended up happening was I first hooked up with um, Love Jones. Love Jones. Yeah, Love Jones and Mischief from Peace of Yeah, R.I.P. Yeah, Mischief. Yeah, R. Peace of Mischief from. So, like, they've put me in my first studio. Actually, before that, there was a southern guy called Al Canimo. Al Canimo, yeah. But like, that was, like, when I was still in high school. But afterwards, after I finished high school, linked up with these guys, and then they linked me up with this other dancehall artist called Brown Sugar. So, yeah, so I did like this one track with him and it actually got it actually got on the charts and stuff. So I mean my, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? So then now it's like um what ends up happening is I end up hooking up with this other crew called Macastrader. Macastrader, yeah. yeah. Shout out to Macastrader. So yeah. this is where like, so, like the first kids like exactly. in Zimbabwe. Yeah, it's like just after Jelani and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? So I think there was, Jelani, there was Sabo Makaya who did Macastrader and then Sunny Makalimu and Take Five. Right. Exactly, yeah. you know, exactly. So I end up linking up with Macastrader because most of them were like into hip hop. And stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that's how I really got into it. Cause by then now, even though the nation didn't know MC Cheeto, whichever words of the Amazon, um people who were into hip hop knew that okay, there's this guy who was on this track here yeah. and he did like some little funny thing. So I know it might be cool to kind of like boost our stable to let him come through to our studio and stuff like that. So yeah. That was like the first studio I'm trying to let me tell you, after after Synergy, mm. the next time I saw you, it was like clubbing days in Synergy. This nigga brings hip hop, either mm. take over in the club. You were like introducing tracks, bangers back in the day mm. before internet wasn't available. Yeah, 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 yeah. One. Next time I see you, it's like like three, four years down the line. Mm. You're on TV, you got a music video on Cock on the Beat. Mm. This other video wearing a Zimbabwe jersey. Yeah, oh, yeah, like, yeah, damn, yeah. this nigga's really pushing the culture yeah, to the next level. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, I've, I've always... Tell me about that song and that era. 
about that era. Well, I mean, the thing is, like, uh, so I'm, I'm trying to even remember the track. I think it was number one. Um, yeah, it's number yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, number yeah. One, yeah. yeah. Um, that the yeah that was off the the project which I did um, with Macastrator again. Yeah, and everything. So. I mean, at that era, it, it was really, like, I was still, like, coming in. I was still finding my own and stuff. Like, that was the first time, like, in proper studios. So it was the first time, like, I'm actually putting together, like, an album. Was that, like, your first video? Very, very first. Very first. Yeah, very yeah, first. Yeah, it's made of the TV. Mm. Yeah, nice one. <laughs> so, you know, after that, what ends up happening is, it's like, I've always felt that one thing about with hip hop, where where everywhere that is blown up and everything, mm -hmm. there's always got to be some representation of where you're from, and it's a bit harder for me because I one I rap predominantly in English, yeah. You know I mean? yeah. Two, I've got an accent, yeah. yeah. Stuff like that. Kid accent, yeah. <laughs> so I had to kind of like you know find other ways to represent where I'm from. So hence why I put on the Zim jerseys. Hence why I was so adamant about using like landmarks in the city, etc. You know what I mean? Like to um, even with the cover for the album which I did, Destination Reality and stuff. Like the front cover was just me chilling in front of uh, Combi Stock. Like you know what I mean? Just things which represent at home, etc. And like if you look through all the projects which continued afterwards it's always been that same mind state like you know how many albums you have today today now it's nine nine albums 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 yeah I respect yeah. MCs with bodies with bodies of work yeah. and like loose mm -hmm. yeah. loose weed loose women yeah, I mean, loose music <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah I like his ass I like his ass yeah I like in all cases it's like in any place of those MC cheaters but like you got a body of work You've been to Jamaica, you came with a body of work. Mm. Junior Brown, you got a body of work. Uh, you always have a body of work. Mm. Yeah, and it's nine albums. Do you know anyone in Zimbabwe, with a rapper with more work than you? I don't think so. Maybe, maybe Mudio. Mudio. Uh, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, maybe. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, the thing is also, what you gotta understand is like, I came into this game like way early, you know. Yeah, I mean? way, way like, early. and a lot of people have even come in after me and left. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I, yeah, a yeah. lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people. I've seen people yeah. come and I've seen them like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, a whole lot of people. Yeah, you know, you hit one where we some retire. Still, if you kill the blow, you're tired already. <laughs> exactly, you know what I mean? So, like, um, for me, it's not that shocking to have that many bodies of work. Um, especially published, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because I've always found a way to finesse the system and stuff. I've always found a way to be like, even if it's just me funding it, and pretty much all of these bodies of work have been self-funded from the recording process to the videos to pressing the discs to putting them out there, etc. You know what I mean? So, um, I've always been one of those people who've been adamant about like, yo, listen, if I'm going in and I'm gonna do a body of work, I'm gonna do all that I can to launch it and make sure that it gets out there. You know what I mean? At least, you know, I don't want to be one of those people, one of those rappers who, if you want to hear my music, you have to come with me and probably come to my show or yeah. you have to come <laughs> with me and come to my studio and mm -hmm. stuff like that. No, music needs to be available and stuff like that. You know what? Uh, when this whole internet thing started like back in the day, I think, 2009, 2010, mm -hmm. like when Zim started catching up, mm -hmm. you were already on River Nation, all these big, big sites, and mm -hmm. you were like leading. Like River Nation's got charts and everything, yeah, and yeah, you were yeah. like MC Cheetah number two, MC Cheetah number two. Mm -hmm. Like you were already hooked to that shit. Mm -hmm. How did you adjust to that? Because you I came mean, way in too early before that shit was introduced. I mean, like and it was just the wave, man. Like you know. Um, And even at that time, you know, like, I was even feeling that I'm still behind and stuff like that. But the thing is, like, me, I've always grown up as kind of like a computer geek. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, you don't like, come across like that. Yeah, yeah, you know, come across <laughs> like Bro Street G. Yeah, you know, you computer yeah, yeah. 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 Revelation. I can yeah. tell you everything about Marvel Comics and such and such. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, um, yeah, so with that, like, 
Um, and also, I guess, being exposed to living overseas, as well, like living in Kuwait and stuff like that, I was exposed to the internet. So I started seeing, like, how other artists were doing things. Like, you know, you had Soldier Boy who, yeah, so like, you know, blew up over the internet using, yeah, <laughs> using things like MySpace, etc., etc. Yeah, et yeah. So, um, I guess maybe it was just lucky that I became aware of these tools yeah, early, a lot early, early you, you know what I mean? And it also kind of helped with the independent mindset to be like, and at that time, I didn't even know about the independent mindset. At that time, I was still yeah, trying to be rap. signed. <laughs> yeah, I just exactly, wanted yeah. to rap. That, that, was that was the dream. That was the dream. Like, yeah, whatnot. exactly. You and, know what I mean? But then, and I, I didn't yeah. know. So I used to even beat myself up about it, like, damn, you know, I'm not doing enough. Like, you know, these people, like, how do I get it? You know, how do I set up this sort of thing? You know what I mean? And then, yeah. um, only to find out that all those things which I was doing at that time and beat myself up over were actually working to my advantage and stuff like that because they were things which gave my name such longevity and gave it was things yeah, which yeah. gave my name such a uh, widespread and um, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly you know what I mean so yeah but really it was just researching man like you know monkey see monkey do you know what I mean like, you yeah. check out that oh okay so when did your first album drop and what's the name of the first album the first album dropped uh, end of 05 that was Destination end of 05 yeah. Yeah, yeah Destination yeah. Yeah. yeah Destination yeah. Yeah. yeah so that was the joint which um, which I did at Macca Street Macca Street and then um, after that um, I linked up with Headbangers it was like around 06 or 07 so. um, then we did like a mixing and like, which was distributed both here and in Australia. So there was like a whole bunch of us on it. And, and, um, then from there, yeah. linked up with Mix Masters. Mix Masters. Yeah, yeah, they on that same. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She's on them. It was like now 07 going to 08. Mm -hmm. um, um, after, after Mix Masters and everything, yeah, so did 2634. That, that was yeah, with, yeah, with heavy chibani. Yeah, yeah, that was basically the album which I think made so me more of a big brother. Yeah, Back exactly. when big brother wasn't big brother. Yeah, you know, big brother, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that was like the album which kind of like transitioned me from being just a studio rapper to more of a household name. Like you know, you know all this is getting raps and whatnot. You know, rating quite a lot, etc. Then. The game changer was um, 09 uh, with Junior Brown, King's Random. King's Random. Yeah, that was the game changer. Like, um, that's when, <laughs> you know, yeah, now we're just getting yeah. calls left, and right, and center. Like, you know, yeah, we actually yeah. getting like proper money to sustain ourselves with this mm -hmm. music, etc. You know what I mean? Like, I moved out. Yeah, the voice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The voice. Yeah, uh, that's like a string man. Man. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, like, there's a. It was just, there were so many hits on that album, actually. Yeah. yeah. Then afterwards, did Ambassador's Son. Um, yeah, that was 2012. That, that's where the track with Rocky came out. And, that uh, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, yeah. Is that your biggest record? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've had other records which came close. But, no, nah, that, that record... How did that record come about? Who called who? What happened? All right. So, I got this beat from this other dude in Zambia. Actually, Zambia mm. uh, Shout out to Zambia. Yeah, I mean, actually, yeah. it's funny, like, how I linked up with the producer. I knew the rapper. The rapper was here in Zim. I can't remember the dude's name. But he had a bunch of beats, which he brought me to ghostwrite. So then I actually picked up. No, no, it was the beat was in this collection. Yeah. So I was like, yo, I hope he doesn't pick this <laughs> This one, this <laughs> one. Yeah. So then, yeah. and he didn't pick that beat. So yeah. I was like, I don't. It doesn't sound like a beat that anyone would go for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, yeah, I, yeah. I can hear like, yo, this is special. Like, you know, it's yeah. kind of. Yeah, that was a vibe for the yeah. things you just jump on. Exactly. It had a dancehall feel to it yeah. for me. And such, you know what I mean? It just had a vibe. So, um... I asked him for the producer's name and such and get the first details. Um, I think shout out to Jay Prince from Zambia. Jay Prince. Yeah. So um, hit him up um, or got in touch with him like on, on Facebook and everything. Got back and forth. He told me, cool, yeah, you can ride the beat. Mm -hmm. Took it to take five. So initially, I wanted to get Bashu. Bashu. Yeah, yeah. Because... Rosalie, Bashu, you know about that. Yeah. 
So Reggie, because he had just done Bodo. Mm-hmm. As so, he was, so he was hot then, like, you know what I mean? So I was, yeah, yeah, right there. And you know, that's my home from yeah, back, yeah. you know, like I came, came up with him from Boat Cafe, etc. Yeah, et yeah. So I want I so I'm like talking to, him, to take five and I'm like, yo, I want to buy Shoopy on the shack. And he's like, no, 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 my nigga. Catch rock. I was like, what? What? Because Rocky bought no, I did. Rocky was hot. Like, you know what I mean? But I didn't have that link with him at, at yeah. that time. Like Rocky was somebody who we bump into each other at shows yeah. backstage. Hey, what up, what up, uh, big fan, you know, yeah. uh, okay, cool, bubble, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, I feel like at that time, he, I, feel like I, I knew him for Susanna and uh, what's this other track? This Jizoka as well. It was the, the other one when he had the bald head. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Single. So, like, you know, I was like, man, there's no way I could move. <laughs> 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 that's what I was thinking. Like, I'm like, man, you know, I'm out here, like, you know, raising my blood, so, like, you know, I drink, whatever, whatever. You know, I was bold ass king, you know what I mean? Exactly. You know what I mean? And then linked up with him at the studio, where we shot most of the video, actually. And, it, you know, played him the beat. He was like, whoa, oh. And he just got behind the mic, and while crushing up a joint, he just starts making up melodies and words. That was the first time I ever saw somebody write without writing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shout out to people who write without writing. Yeah, so that was, that was, that was, that was like, uh, hey. that was like, and he came up with that hook like within like 10 minutes. Mm. I think he, he finished the song before he finished rolling the joint. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how that record came about. And and, yeah. yeah and Were you expecting that? I, I definitely out. was not expecting that. It came on like the biggest record in yeah. the that came out. Yeah, yeah. Like we even won. I think ZBC top two hundred, yeah. like number two or something. Like yeah, really. Like, yeah. Second, second most popular video on ZBC for, for that year for twenty. 12 or um, Yeah, you know, it, it was crazy. So, and I remember when I first played it for my inner circle, mm. it was like one of those tracks which, like, most of my homies were like, yeah, you were like, yeah, what up, man? Boom, baby, no, no, man. Boom, baby, 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 no, man. Boom, so no, man. Boom, baby, no, man. It's from the heart, but then, yeah. you know, that was the thing, though, even when we wrote the track, like, because, you know, you, when you hear the bounce of it, you know, you're thinking it's, it's something which you can move to, it's something which you can dance to, so it's just so easy to write a party track, on. but then there was just something about it which made me say, no, let me try to go conscious, you know? and I think that's another thing which carried the track yeah. so far, because not of just the song itself but what we were saying on the song ah uh, nice one so does it ever want you that track try to beat it like oh. that kind of situation oh, like man. Catch a man fuck and ah, they, damn, they, they, damn, they, 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 they okay it's not show. really trying to beat it as such but it's trying to play at that level like yeah. the system uh, not. I mean, the thing is, for me, I'm not somebody who tries to do the same thing twice. Mm, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've, I've never done... I don't even think I've used the same flow twice on a track. Mm. Yeah. I'm always, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, trying to maneuver better in it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> try something different. Like, you know, like, oh, we have yeah, something to say on that. Exactly, like, you, you know, just know. do what it's yourself. Yeah. And, you know, Jay-Z flows, do it, yeah, uh, yeah, these so, new flows. Uh, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, I be, and I think that's also suits the evolution of an artist. I think that's also what's given me this sort of longevity as well. Um, the fact that I am able to adapt, the fact that I am still a, such a fan of the culture that yeah. I can still be influenced by it. Right. You know, yeah. as much as I do, you know, yeah. as, as much as I do instead of fighting Yeah, exactly. Yeah, nah, 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 this little kid, this new rapper, you know, yeah, exactly, you know. So, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah,
But then where it does kind of haunt me is really with the fans. Because it's, yeah, because they, they always want to hear their track. And then sometimes when I'm just like, man, you know how bored I am? <laughs> <laughs> I'm easy chill, man. Yeah, man. I got, I'm telling you, you know, hey, I, I got some new shit. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you know but, I mean, oh, it's got to say and it's that. still your track. Yeah, it's so bored, yeah. man. Yeah, so it's, 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 how it's a How do you link up with Brown? With Julian yeah. Brown. Yeah. All right, so fuck. you were too like this, like English rapper, uh, well spoken, uh, accent on point, and this sort of rapper that's like street and I wish you were not a guy. And you made these things and you get the best of both worlds. I think it's funny because like. And the title album, of the album suits. Yeah, yeah. I think it's funny because like in a lot of ways, Julian Brown and I have a lot of the same upbringing. Especially music wise, oh. like a lot of our yeah, yeah, a lot of our teachers actually or mentors were the same people. We just really didn't um, click and hang until the point of when we were doing this album. Right. You know, because um, I was a club MC, Jimmy Brown was a club MC. Um, Who got him? He was at Turtles. Mm. Yeah. 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 Um, the turtles that it changed to Tropicana. Uh, yeah, exactly. It was like turtles. Um, mm. you know, the uh, thing, what you call it? I did a track with Brown Sugar. Junior Brown used to tour and back up Brown Sugar. You know what I mean? I was working with Mr. Junior Brown was working with Mr. You know, the, those sort of like weird coincidences and stuff like that. And then um, also with Alcanimo, Alcanimo took me into yeah into into my first studio when I was a teenager. Um, so you've been friends with Alco? Yeah, from way back when when, when niggas used to call him me. <laughs> yeah, uh, Julian Brown, same thing. Like you know what I mean? Like Julian Brown refers to Alcanimo as coach. You know what I mean? Like because a lot of um, Julian Brown's earlier styles were. <laughs> guided and reinforced by, by Alpinino. So it just so happened that another weird coincidence which came up with the beginning of um, this whole project, with, with how we started this project was um, I was now staying with my manager at the time, who was in Louis Quinton. Came in. So, uh, thing, we started up like a little media house called uh, Media. Yeah, right. Jennings were selling CDs and like this other. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sell CDs. You, you remember those Jack Sparrow yeah, um, yeah, remember, yeah, remember. DVDs and stuff? Yeah. Like, remember they used to come like. Into the like, cafe in town. Yeah, yeah. Remember they used to come out with like these little interludes, like songs and yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, I used to, yeah, I used to write, like, I, I wrote like a lot of those jingles as well and stuff. Like, I even rapped on one of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dream mm-hmm. Brown also did the same thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you know, it was crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, even that whole, um, yo, watching Jack Sparrow, yo, that was me and Quincy <laughs> going to Bordeaux Village, yo, you know, during the flea market, and like, yo, just look at the camera and say, you watch Jack Sparrow. <laughs> yeah, 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 Revelation, yeah. Jack Sparrow, yeah, yeah, the voice behind that. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah, yeah. So, uh, nice. so now, um, chilling with, with Quincy, we're, we're in this flat together, like, and then all of a sudden, another dude comes in, and he didn't tell me this dude was moving. So much. So I just started working on ambassadors. So now I see this dude's here, he's he just not eating. <laughs> if I didn't oh shit, this nigga moved in. Alright, cool. You know, it's horrible, you know what I mean? Like, because where we were staying, it was a two bedroom and a lounge. So then now we ended up turning the other bedroom, which was my bedroom originally, into the studio. And then that's now where Junior Brown, uh, Junior Brown and I were crashing, or if one of us had a chick, then the other one would crash on the couch. <laughs> and then Quincy was like in the other bedroom, she was like in the main bedroom. So then, like, while we're kicking it there in that scenario, like, basically, yeah, li- living together, basically, you know, we're roommates. And then we did, um, Yee my way. So I originally wanted that for Ambassador Center. So I was like, yo, this is crazy. I got this hook, right? 
But I need like somebody come through with like some deep shot of lingo, like street slang, T C T T T like and you know it's just like <laughs> then like the part where I'm gonna stop and I need somebody to say some shit, you know what I mean? Hey. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he was, he came up with that, right? I was like, dope, you know what I mean? So put it, pitch control it, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Okay, we had the hook. Then he was like, yo, hook up some bus. I was like, hell yeah, dude, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead. And the nigga just blew me away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, breezy. I was like, whoa, this is the first time I ever heard somebody rap totally in Shona, but with that sort of flow. Mm-hmm. Cool. Like, yeah, it was, was cool. Yeah, too. it was, right. it wasn't offbeat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what to do this. Yeah, it was like, because a lot of the times, I mean, yo, not, no, no shade. Yeah, like, to, you know what I mean? To a lot of the artists that were out at that time. But I just wasn't feeling a lot of urban grooves hip-hop yeah, yeah. at that time. Fuck it down. Yeah, you like know. Like a fuck it down. Exactly, yeah, yeah, you know. In bunch of places. Yeah. yeah, and even worse, at that time, I couldn't hear half the shit which niggas were saying. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, at least now it's better. Like, even when I hear, like, a lot of the tracks nowadays, I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. that's why this is crazy. You know what I mean? But then, I wasn't even catching the bars and shit, so I was just hearing somebody rapping. Mm-hmm. But then, now, this is somebody rapping in Toronto. Um... Which made me want to listen. Yeah. And I actually learned a lot of Sean who got out. So we did that track. And then we were like, hey, you know what? Got a good chemistry here and we got a band up. Let's see if we can move. Did like four more tracks. Next thing you know, we had eight tracks. Next thing you know, we have 15 tracks. So, okay, cool. Let's stop. <laughs> Let's cut all these tracks down. Then we were like, hey, yo. No, we really cool. We did a mixtape, and then we did ah, uh, yeah. dude. Yeah, and all this within the space of six months. Yeah. And the rest is history. The rest is history. And yeah, our wounds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Remember uh, the first hip hop awards? Yeah. Back three of them. Yeah. Back three yeah, of them I bitches. Them. <laughs> I mean, yeah. 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 And when, like, you came from an Asian hip hop boy, we didn't have the neck rappers, the neck rappers were not that big. Mm. But now, things are changing. People are no, such more sure. Correction, there, there, there were, because this was, when I first got into the game, like, officially with hip hop, um, it was Urban Rules. Urban Rules. Urban Rules was yeah. big. So, like, I mean, and for me, like, a lot of those peeps were rap. Like, yeah, right. Like, <laughs> like a lot of those people were rapping. Son of Son is still mm-hmm. he's kind of rapping. XQ, yeah, yeah Mafumo, the Ben, Maski, Maski. Yeah, yeah. I just say like there's been like a huge evolution, like from that era to now and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that change when like people are like saying this is this is not even good. It's now hip hop. Mm-hmm. It's now Zim. How did that How did that affect you? I think in a more positive way, because now it was a lot easier to define who I was. There were rappers that were fighting that, nah, 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 that's not hip hop. Yeah. English is fit bars. Yeah. This, is, this is hip hop. Nah, we're not exactly. doing that. We're not that, mixing that. That, that, yeah. that. that was negative yeah. for me. You know what I mean? That didn't, that didn't really play that well to my advantage. Because. It was just coming straight from me. Exactly. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, so now if I can't be accepted amongst the people who are doing the music of the land, you know what I mean? Like, I'm forever going to be an outcast, but I'm, like, one of the few people from the hip-hop community who's pushing and playing in these same circles and stuff like that. So, like, I'm an outcast to them as well. (laughs) You know what I mean? So, like, for those, like, the urban group years, like, it it was quite hard for me to get, like, a proper footing. Like, you know, I was, like, one of those, I guess, an 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 anomaly in the game. You know what I mean? Um, I think there was me and there was Monetti, and then there was Major Players. Major Players, you know, Major Players, we wanted my jingle to a trade being cruise, and shit could say, Exactly, yeah, you know, it was, so, it was, it was, it was, it was kind of, of a, but you see, exactly, yeah. but then you see, 
I never got that. Yeah, you always know, yeah, 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 exactly. You know, I'm just, yeah, yeah. You're not gonna have no vacuum. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. you know, like you know. So then now, what I guess what was lucky for me was when the radio stations. Yeah. You know what I mean? When we had, because before it was just. Radio 3 Radio 3 You know what I mean mm-hmm. So Move to Brim to Exactly you know? Yeah So then now when we had Star FM and ZFM Kind of What I feel kind of happened Was Star FM said Okay we're gonna take Urban Blues And we're gonna take All the dancehall peeps From Urban Blues And we're gonna put them In Star FM And then ZFM was like Right So what we're gonna do Because we're uptown yeah. And we're, we're gonna take yeah. All the rappers And then <laughs> let's put them yeah. On this station And everything So that kind of like just opened up avenues and everything like that because now it was able to define everything. Like before, we'd all be at the same show. We'd all be at sports yeah, time. We'd all be at these galas and stuff like that. And you know, like most of the people at the galas would be, you know, the ghetto youth at that time was all about dancehall. You know what I mean? So it doesn't matter you. Exactly. Yeah, they ain't trying to hear that. You know what I mean? So there was no audience really cultivated. For that market, so then when it stopped being urban blues, because urban blues had us all in one pot, it was just you had rappers, yeah. you had dancehall artists, you had R&B, you had Patek No More, you had everybody, 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 you fight one award, yeah, you know what I mean, like, but we were all getting the same genre, so no specific audience was allowed to flirt. And that's what happened. That was the issue with urban blues. So then now that. Stations have managed to start defining different genres. Like so, you've got now like what I like to call urban tsunami, even like which is your job praises and etc. That even probably yeah, even throw like that. Yeah, I'd probably even throw killer tea in there. You know? Yeah, killer tea. Yeah, <laughs> yes, you I'm talking about yeah, you know, exactly. killer tea. Yeah, shout out to y'all. Yeah. yeah. Then you take it to another. Yeah. Then you've got like proper Afro beat, which you know is represented by your XQs, your yeah, Amaras, XQs, you know. Yeah. Then you, yeah, Tammy, and everything. And Tammy is actually more of like a pop R&B. artist. Yeah, yeah R&B, 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 pop R&B, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Then you got like, like fucking hip-hop, fucking hip-hop, 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 hip-hop. Yeah, exactly. Hey. But if that's what it is, though. You know what I mean? You should be able to freely be able to move between all these genres and explore different audiences and pockets around the country because yeah. the audiences are there yeah the you know what i mean there are yeah you know what i mean there are people who you know the only thing is just the moving is 1980s pop <laughs> you know what i mean but <laughs> yeah you know so there, there is a market for that but then before that market wasn't being Exposed to him, it was all just oh, okay, cool. This is mm. you are all the same market now. Now that markets have been defined, like, oh, okay, cool. This is what this is what this is what you even have events now which are catered to these markets. And you decided to take charge and like be a radio personality on uh, ZFM. Mm. How did that go about? Oh, okay. So that was actually really funny because I I never thought I was gonna be on radio or at least at that time. Um, what year was that when you were radio? I think it was radio mid or end of 2014. Yeah, around about then. So basically, um, I'm at some event. Um, I'm emceeing an event for, um, I think it was Hunters. Yeah. So this event was hosted at ZFM Stereo, like in the outside garden and everything. So all the big wigs were there. Like, you know, but, Head of Human Resources, mm-hmm. the CEO, etc., etc. So I'm doing my thing. I'm doing my thing, and I think somebody was sent to me. Some dude just comes to see you. The CEO of the company wants to holler at you. Super. Not even super. Like, come on, come on. It's a check. Yeah, so what was this other lady like? Uh, her name now. She retired. She 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 left. She stepped down. Resigned. Yeah, she resigned from the company. But yeah, she was the one who was like, "Yo, you've got an amazing voice, you've got the perfect voice for radio. Yeah, you know, sure. But you know, I want you at my station. Can you please come on Monday, like whatever?" Like, okay, and then 
human resources. Yeah, like, here's my card. Yeah, it's like, oh, I'm fine. Make sure they're doing it. You know, like, I also know a lot of people, like, to use it there, yeah. like, in those circles. So it's just like, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, you remember that I'm the one who actually told the other person. Yeah, well, I could. Cool. <laughs> but, but I was killing the joke, man. Right? I was killing the joke, man. Right? Like, yo, you, y'all called me out here. Like, yeah. Oh. So, I mean, that's that's how that came about. Like, I just kind of bumped into it. You know? mm. So, were you like the first fix or the fix? Or the fix was already there? Oh, the fix was... Uh, then it was T-Bass and P-Styles. T-Bass and P-Styles. Yeah. yeah. So, when I got there, P-Styles had left. So, the first, I think, month or two, it was myself and T-Bass doing the show. And um, after that... Then T Base left, and then, like they even had a whole meeting about that. Like, yo, listen, you think that you need to you know, just take over the show? And hip hop was in your hands, yeah, exactly. And yeah. what did you do about that? Ah, I had yeah. fun with it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, first thing I did was yeah. strap the old program and fix. I was like, right, okay, you're not using you that anymore. <laughs> yeah. Now, because like what I realized was I had a, a chance to. Reignite the culture, um, you know what I mean. So, it's, exactly, you know. So, I remember when I first got onto that show uh, when T Base was running it, he had it broken down like this. They'd have the first hour would be local hip hop, then the second hour would be international hip hop, basically South African hip hop, and then mm-hmm. the US also in the US. Well, SA in the States, but we didn't really know much. Yeah. And then the third hour was house. Ooh. Yeah. Just house. Just house. Just <laughs> so I was like, I'm dead, I'm dead. Yeah. So I was like, nah, we're going to change this whole script. So first thing I did was I scrapped the whole local and international thing. I think that gives us a bad light like, to kind of like separate us and stuff like okay these guys are kind of cool mm-hmm. but I'm gonna start slow it's like you know when <laughs> they do these events and they put like the boring people first and mm-hmm. like, yeah. the dope stuff at the end and shit. Mm-hmm. so I was like nah fuck that you know what I mean mixing it all together so I play a GZ track and then after that I play Little Wayne and then after that I play like four other local items like maybe Mariachi and or mm-hmm. and I also started looking for new music, like actively looking for new music. Like, you know, my email was open to everybody. My app was open. My Facebook was just open to anybody. So, and I would take the time out to listen to what's hot. Like, there's like a lot of artists which I broke even onto the scene from that era because I was one of the few people who... Yeah, it was like this. Give us one name, like one name that's playing like this. Yeah, what was his name? Okay, Sway the Third. Yeah, um, boy, Sway the Third. Yeah, Boy Mac. Boy Mac. Yeah, yeah the um, new Edge Town kid. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, you got in your neck, is it? Yeah. You remember the Mar Wars and Tati won in our war. Oh, that. All right. Uh, yeah. 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 Ah, Cheeto was an epic man. Cheeto was an epic man. We just dropped under. 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 We just dropped yeah, 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 just, yeah, just, did a tour, yeah. just did a show in Cuba and everything. Like, yeah. you know, we had like a whole lot of money to spend being a total idiot. This <laughs> <laughs> yeah. came with an album though. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, Red Golden Green. Yeah. Yeah, Red yeah, Golden. Yeah. That, was a, that whole thing was just an experience, man. J.A. Like, it's crazy. Recording in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Tell us about it. Recording in Jamaica. Oh, yes, you're a hip hop cat. Yeah. You're always. The old one out. Yeah. Now you're in this setup. Dance or dance or dance. Yeah, I'm trying to get niggas sure, sure. to record your shit. I, well, <laughs> well, the thing is though, like I ended up linking with people who fucks with my shit. Like, yeah, you know what I mean, like even when I got there, um, before I landed, right, I actually linked up with. Um, I was in contact with this other producer, um, Renzo, Renzo, Lorenzo. Yeah, shout, shout out Renzo. to you. Yeah, you know I mean, um, so he produces for uh, Losing Fire. Uh, He's done stuff for Popcorn, he's done stuff for Chronics, he's done stuff via the like, he all over the enough world. demands them, you know what I mean? So <laughs> funny story actually, this is how I met Lucifer, you know what I mean? <laughs> like so I'm in I'm in I'm in Kingston, I think we've been there for like two weeks. 
and holler at Lorenzo and say, yo, Redmond, I'm gonna bring you to the studio. So I'll send one of my youths come to pick you up while I go there. Ah, cool, yeah. So I'll link me by this other hotel, uh, the Spanish Bowl Hotel, and everything. So I'll be chilling. So I'm there, have my drinks and shit, check, you know. Spanish Bowl is like one of these posh, Points and shit. It's like old white people and like oh, right. yeah, 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 pink, it's pink, funny, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. like, <laughs> <it's laughs> basically, you know what I mean? But then out of nowhere, I just see this one nigga with cornrows just come through like, <laughs> and he looks like right on the sticker, and then he just dips. So I'm like, ah, oh, okay, that must be my rabbit. So mm-hmm. I hop up, catch up with you, like, yo, what up? Um. Looking for Jesus, like, yeah, man. Like, yo, my name's Hartford. You know what I mean? Renzo sent me, like, we're going to Spanish town. You know what I mean? So, Jamaican accent. Yeah. Patois. Patois. Well, <laughs> at least he was speaking in a way that it was just an accent. I could, I could hear what he's saying, though. Shit. So it's like, so I'm like, cool. So we're hopping the whip and shit. Roll out. It's like, yo, you play the guy? Yeah, man. Yeah, man, like, yeah, man yo. Grab some weed, yeah, roll yourself a joint, man. Roll myself a joint, yeah. You drink, man? I'm like, yeah, it's like, you grab some apples and rum in the back there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, cool, bro. Yo, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, welcome here, you know man. <laughs> uh, so now, Spanish town is like Chichu Visa to Harada. You know what I mean? It's, it's a way easy. out, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And it's a huge ass ghetto. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's Chicha, basically. Ooh. But in Jamaica. You know what I mean? So, this is, this is where Vibes Cartel comes from, this is where Popcorn comes from. It's from we got Luton Fires also from mm-hmm. there, um, Capleton's from there. There's like enough mm-hmm. artists from Spanish town. Right? So we're driving there, right? And things are cool. I'm even bumping in my music. We're bumping in Ambassador's Son in the world. And she's like, you know, it's like, yo, oh, this you, fuck. But every so often, his phone would ring and then he'd answer it and flip into the deepest dirtiest patois I've ever seen, heard. Like, he's just like, yo, bumble, cl- pussy, yo, like, you know what I mean? I'm just like, hearing a whole bunch of, like, kissing the teeth. It's like, I'm just like, So then he gets on the phone and he's like, yo, man, yo, man, that's all man, no, you know what I mean? Business time, something I'm like, yo, we need to get money and shit, but yo, when you roll with me, man, yo, don't worry, man, you know, no man, I rage for you, you know what I mean? Yo. Pay the glove compartment, yeah. Check the girl, them. <laughs> so, yo, open the glove compartment. Yeah, for real, there's a fucking. Like, there's an evil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right, cool, yeah. you know? <laughs> Good, you did. All right, so we're going out. Now, whole album done and shit. We pull up to the block, you know, and his booms are chilling there, and everything. Lorenzo still ain't there. He's somewhere else and shit. Dude starts bumping my music loud. Like, yo, this is dude. Like, you know, niggas even ask me to rap for the shit. Like, yo, <laughs> I'm like basically doing a concert now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you and little kids performing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, these little kids come. Yeah. yeah. You, you have a voice, this year. Like, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, they knew you from Zimbabwe. Nah, they, nobody knew me. They just knew. They just know yeah, that I'm a dude it. who's brought with my no, back. Not even from, no, they, they, he, Hartford was telling them I'm from Zimbabwe. So that's even fucking with their head more. But yeah, you know, they're like, well, they must be like this in Africa. No, man. <laughs> 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 why you trying to call me? You know? It's like, no. So, yeah, so <laughs> anyway, um, Lorenzo pulls up. Just when he pulls up and he's like, yo, let's go to the studio it's right up the road. About three cars pull up at high speed and a bunch of angry just jump out of the road. Like, oh, shit. And they're shouting at the people I'm with. Shit, yeah, niggas is even pushing each other. And all I'm thinking is, this is gonna have gun. My niggas got a gun. These niggas must have guns. Ah, yeah. oh, shit. Where do I even run this shit from? Middle of nowhere, I'm in Jamaica. Then one of the cars, who, one of, out of one of the cars now, this other short dude just jumps out. And then Lorenzo and Hotfoot just bolt to this dude. And they start talking to this dude, talking to this dude. Oh, Tana. And then the dude like calms down the other people. Clearly he's the one running the pack and shit like that. And then next thing you know, I hear, yo, 
Lowton man, you need to meet MC Cheetah, bad rapper from Zimbabwe. I was like, oh, boot and fire. That's how I'm boot and fire, man. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. Yeah. 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 But that's yeah. like just, just an example of what it's like kicking it recording in Jamaica. A lot of people smoking ganja with a lot of guns. A whole lot of great. Yeah. A whole lot of, a lot of guns, a lot of weed. <laughs> what about the women? Um, yeah. Very beautiful. Uh, where where we, where we recorded Hustle All Day with on on the road. We recorded the album in different studios. Yeah, in different studios. Three, different three, studios. three or four different studios. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, a big house, which is Shaggy's studio. Mm. Um, G Jam in Port Antonio, which is that's also where we did most of the mastering. Um, G Jam is like it's this huge studio, like on the other side of the island. And that's where, like, you find Jay Z did part of 444 at that studio. Snoop did his Snoop Lion album there. Drake did um, Thank Me Later at that studio. Like, yeah. I'm more than just an option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, where, that's where he recorded that album. Um, so the, the night before I recorded in that studio, um, I bumped into Florence and the Shin coming out of the studio session. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, how come this Marvel is slipping on your work? Like, I don't feel like it's getting enough recognition. I don't think I, people I, respect you. I don't think so either, you. but I mean, I think my main issue is well, I've got a big mouth. Like, I, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like I, I speak from the heart a lot of the times. I wear my heart on my sleeve. So, I've realized yeah. um, as time has gone by, there's probably a lot of toes which I have stepped on in the, in the industry. Um, and also, like, dumb mistakes which I've made out of like, you know, my YouTube thing. Um, I think well, my good music is good music. Yeah, good music. Yeah, no. Exactly. So, like R. Kelly right now, Michael Jackson. That's true. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's, I it's think the, the, the difference with me and a lot of artists is that <laughs> as much as I did get radio airplay etc etc mm -hmm. and I still do it I think it's more begrudgingly you know what I mean like cause like they don't have a choice but to you know what I mean yeah, yeah so they don't really push it as much I, well that's just my personal opinion if I'm wrong yeah yeah you know what I mean but um it's just really a matter of like even with newspapers or with I think I get the most love from television, yes, and yes. I get the most yeah. love online. Yeah, I want to work figure it out with love on the internet, like you know, blog sites, etc. Mm -hmm. But I don't really get that much shine like on national radio and on um, on press, on printed press. Yeah, um, we. I remember the the first time I, it actually struck me was the first hip hop awards. Because I remember like I said, we won three awards. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like we won um best collab. And those awards were like yeah wow and we like won first album of the year. And I mean hip hop wasn't gonna be this out here now. Exactly. Yeah. Like I mean these those the the, 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 the process the process of the voting I mean how you won the awards even it was a vote which was done online which people could see every day so there was no way that you could cheat the system mm -hmm. so that was like an authentic thing like you know everything like so i remember the next day when um the, um, the newspaper article came out and yeah because stunner won four awards which was yeah it was dope you know what i mean <laughs> so but then the article was all about stunner and then about some other jews performance and then we were like a footnote. We were like, MC Sheena and Junior Brown also had a stellar performance at the end of the night and they also took home two awards. And I was like, what two awards? We had three. You're like, yo, what? You ain't gonna say nothing else? You ain't gonna say, we ain't gonna say that we won out of the year. Like, yo, like, 
You know what I'm saying? So that was like the first time. Someone mentioned it. Okay, yeah. 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 yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo. Freestyle. No, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you get a guy with Christians. Like, yo, bro. Exactly. Yeah, you dropped a freestyle for him. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo. Yeah. Like, what? And you know what I'm saying? That tradition here, guys. Because you see, take everyone like to love to know what's still happening. I want you to freestyle more. You know what I mean? So, like. And then, like, there was, like, other things as well, like, you know, even events with people, which we've done and stuff like that. Like, I remember we did a high for 2016. Like, yo, that was huge, man. Like, and the response which we got was huge, but, like, yo, for us, it was like, it never happened. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, it never happened. Like, you in DC moment. Yeah, maybe you're wrong with it. Maybe I'm wrong with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yo, that's the hardest to speak, man. Yo, yeah, it's time for a change out there. Yeah, yeah. we need to change. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? we need so, to change. Yeah, but you know, um, yeah, so, but at the end of the day, man, like, whether or not it's my fault or other people's fault, like, you know, it's really, it doesn't really bother me whether as many people out there, like, don't know me as I feel they should, you know what I mean? I'm still gonna keep on doing what I yeah, do. Yeah, uh, let me tell you something about nigga, you've known by the by the bus. But I'm gonna put most gun on five thousand as the bus. And we're gonna on the team on the bus. And I know you my nigga and I've known you for a minute and I know how you hold it down. I've seen you perform. So I ain't got nothing. What's in the show kicks and ingredient thing here? If you wanna to host that, if you wanna book a fee Kuna yeah, big brother, we just say you wanna start that down and you wanna transition from the great. I've seen that. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, like a, done, done, done collabs and music with the greatest of them. Yeah, yeah. So, and I might think with terms of bad press or bad whatever fuck. I think you're the most collaborated, featured artist me for best man. Or you're just a banana on the most featured feature. You on like every Mazwanu, you made that get to you. You on everyone's record. What's made you like? If you, if you want to get a hit, yeah. give me a call, man. Yeah, of course. <laughs> what made you want to like be like on people's joints like that and change that? No, like I don't even get a movie, dog. I change that now. Well, I mean, one thing which I which I like. But you're not nigga. My my niggas are not. I'm just gonna collab with myself, nigga. I'm gonna get a bridge, nigga. No, but you change that. You know what I mean? One like especially the the Junior Brown experience definitely changed my perspective on a lot of things. And then also. um I've always believed that collaboration is always going to be a benefit, especially if the two artists are good artists and stuff like that. It's how, like, in marketing, they call it, like, you know, penetrating the market. You know what I mean? Like, so, yeah, I'm a North man, I'm a North cat, but then I want my music to be heard everywhere, you know what I mean? I don't want to just be hot in the North and stuff like that. So, yeah, it makes sense for me to do a collab like with somebody like RPOs or with somebody like um, Soldier Love or, you know, with Ninja Lipsy or with uh, King Shaddy or with, yeah, Tano, you know, you know yeah. or, with, or with Tammy or with, because what you're doing is you're exposing each other to your markets. You know what I mean? They, um, there are those people who listen to um, theme, what you call it? Um, who listen to Soldier Love who don't listen to me and stuff like that. There are people who listen to Rocky who don't listen to me. There are people who listen to me who don't listen to Rocky. Rocky. Yeah, exactly. So it opens and explores different avenues for you and stuff like that. So I, I think it would be very stupid for me to just be like, eh, nah, you know, I'm, I'm trying to really fuck with anybody. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, the checking for collaborations, man, it's all good. What would you have with them? How did that collab happen? What's that time I think you in Jamaica? Yeah, I'd actually just come back. That was just after I'd finished up um, the, the Cuba show and everything like that. So, yeah, I just we just were all at Take Five Spot. You know what I mean? And if you do you have to get home to me, see Because, I mean, the track, yeah. like, we just did the track and left it. And I, I got back to Jamaica. I mean, I got a call. And they're like, yo, bro, this track's thrown up or something. Okay, so you want to do a video like this and this and this. So you just take clips there, you know, take clips here, then you just sort of merge it there. And she's like, okay, cool. <laughs> and it just so happened that Carnival was that same weekend. Yeah, so... 
I just took out the camera and yeah. <laughs> 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 hey, yeah. yo. And it was crazy, man. Like, you know, shout out to Sean Paul for, you know. Yeah, Sean Paul was in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That was, yeah. That was yeah. super dope, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was just chilling there, like, at one of the clubs and shit. Mm. I also had, like, a VIP pass on the joint and shit like that. Mm. So we just ended up in the same section and shit. Like, me and my people, he was, like, literally two tables away. So when peeps were coming up doing selfies, I'm like, yo, man. Rapper was bubble shooting music video, y'all man, cool. <laughs> <laughs> no just, yeah, I mean, just yeah, man. Yeah, he's just he's a, he's just a really cool dude, person out there. Like, even the whole vibe there, like you know, they feel comfortable there because they because they're at home, so they don't be rolling around with like fifties bodyguards and shit like that. We, we chill, you know, they'll probably have like one or two in security and the rest yeah. is just personal. Yeah, and that point. What happened to me? Spend the spend. Yo, RIP. Yeah, RIP Nipsey. Yeah, yeah, that's the same week. We still more than Nipsey hustle. Ah, it's what they say, man. Like you know, you get the most hate from where you from where you grow yeah. up, from where you're home, like from where you come home. Because a lot of people, like, even with how they explain what happened, the events which led to his death or his injury, like that. It was a nigga who he knew. Don't do my pictures, I'll see you later. Mm. It was a nigga who he knew. How about you listen to Nipsey's music? Mm. He's talking about that bullshit. It's a nigga that you smoke with. It's a nigga that gonna smoke with. Yeah. That's how it is. So, you know. So I was just sick right now. Uh, very small. Very small. Yeah. Very yeah. small. Any type of shit coming? A lot. A lot uh, of shit, though. Look out for um, me and, home, and yeah, Zimbiana featuring Gusty Warrior, man. That's gonna be hot. And you always shoot yeah. videos, man. No matter <laughs> the climate of the economy, no matter the country, no matter what you know. Hey, I do music, shoot. I gotta shoot a video. We got by shoot. Google, by Crook. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, man. Gotta get that footage out there to as many people as possible. Um, yeah. Hey, man. Shout out to you, dog. Thank you, yeah, thank you, yeah, thank man. you, thank you to post in the post edited version of this, right? Like, you know, they're just gonna yeah. slip a couple of songs in my yeah, 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 and links to his music and whatnot. Yeah, man. And shout out to you, man. Yo, shout, shout out to you. you. Yeah, episode 15, Red Nation Live, guys. Do subscribe and RIP Nipsey Hustle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stay crooked. Happy birthday, could it be? Yeah, yes, five years, yes. years and rest of Red Nation today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we'll go back quick. We're still shooting this episode yeah. 15, my nigga. We'll see you next week. Black. Yeah.